If you like this video, why not subscribe? Hey everybody, welcome back to the Recap Q&A show. That's the show where I share links with you that have accumulated on the Facebook group. And I answer questions that you sent to me last week through comments and email. Uh, most specifically, thefrugalfilmmaker at gmail.com, which is where you should send your question if you have one. And I will try and answer it for you personally through email and also here on this show. Uh, last week, well, actually I was going to ask everybody a question initially here, which isn't the question of the week, but I noticed somebody posted a link to say where the questions actually started in the show, so they could kind of skip over all my rantings and ravings and such. So I thought today I would just go right to the questions so you wouldn't have to do that, and then maybe I can rant and rave later. How about that? Does that sound good? So we'll go ahead and jump right into the questions. Um, the first one comes from a comment posted on Frugal Crane 2.0. This comes from Ben Anderson, and he asks... Uh, how do you power the monitor? And he's talking about in that video, uh, which I'll leave a link to, I have a portable monitor so I can see my shot and my framing and know how to, where to point the camera and how to move it. And it's a little uh, SD monitor that runs off 12 volts. Uh, and what I did, Ben, uh, was I got a 12 volt battery off of eBay. It was actually a battery that I first learned about through DSLR Film Noob, and I'll leave the link. Well, I'll leave the link to the post that I created on my blog, and I made a video about using these batteries, which will in turn leave a link to his original post, if you'd like to see that. Um, they're about $23, uh, and they last about four and a half hours, five hours. These batteries, they're kind of a rectangular battery. Uh, so if I'm not near an outlet, I can use those batteries. Um, I'm actually thinking about getting another one, uh, because I'm thinking about using a larger monitor, even though it's still an SD monitor. But those batteries will also translate to the uh, HD monitors like the Lilliput or ones that are kind of expected to run off of car power. Uh, so those batteries are actually pretty decent. They just take forever to charge with the supplied charger, 14 hours if I recall, for 4 to 5 hours of charge. is really long, but that's what I use. Next up we have a show from Aspera Frangov, hope I pronounced that correctly. He says, I bought my camera last spring uh, for my brother's wedding and I literally spent days picking the best one out for the budget. I was delighted and proud to see that it coincided with your choice of camera, the Canon Vixia HFS 100. I know you have since moved on to using your Sony more, but I wanted to ask you if you could recommend some must-have lenses and other accessories you found were good for the camcorder. Uh, well, you know, even though I have moved, moved on, so to speak, uh, using my Sony for more narrative stuff, like the last short film I did, Conversation Hearts, uh, was shot with the Sony NEX5N. But I still use my camcorders uh, all the time. Probably one big reason is that they have no overheating issues like a lot of DSLR or mirrorless interchangeable lens cameras. Uh, with the exception of the GH2, I believe, they all overheat after a certain amount of time. So if you're going to do any event shooting or... Like I do all my uh, instructional video stuff still with my Canon. And uh, it's great for that sort of thing. I'm using a camcorder right now. Uh, this is a Sony Exacti BPC CG10 uh, camcorder, one of those little pistol grip style camcorders for this show. So I still use camcorders, they're definitely useful. I mean, you can still use them for narrative storytelling too. Uh, I like the Sony, one thing it allows you to do with the interchangeable lenses is get shallow depth of field and different lens effects like that. But as far as uh, accessories, uh, probably the big, the, the largest, largest, the ones I use the most. Are probably uh, I have a wide-angle lens. It's a Raynox 6600 HD lens. You just have to find the right thread size for your camera. It's a really good wide-angle lens. It's one of the screw kind kind you screw onto the front of the camera, um, and I really liked it. It's a good lens. It's uh, there's not a lot of barrel distortion, so it's not a doesn't make everything look fisheye. If you want that, you get a fisheye lens. But I like the extra uh, angle that it allows, so I can just see more in the picture. I think that's really important um, if you need. Obviously, if you're in a cramped space or a smaller space, that'll widen up your picture so you can just see more, which is pretty critical. So you're not just limited by the uh, zoom lens built into the camera. Um, when I paid for that, I'll leave a link to it below if it's still available on Amazon. It's kind of expensive. It was like $125. Uh, but I got it through a project that I was working on where they couldn't pay me, but they said, well, we'll buy you whatever gear you need for the shoot. And that was one thing I wanted. It was a good uh, wide-angle lens, and, that, and I got one, the Raynox 6600. The other thing I use a lot, which has been invaluable and it's lasted through several cameras, is an XLR box, an adapter interface that sits underneath your camera. Uh, I think I have mine is the uh, Sign Video 
uh, XLR Pro gives you two XLR inputs plus it's got a little passive mixer with knobs on it so you can adjust the level going into your camera. Um, it's also got some, like a stereo mono switch. It has a ground loop switch so if you're hearing a buzz in your audio you can flip the switch and a lot of the time that'll take care of it. That's a great item. It's made out of metal. It's sturdy. Like I said it's lasted through two cameras now. I think two or three cameras. Two cameras? No, three. I'm on my third camera where I use it. Uh, because I first would use it at a Canon Opt Optura Pi, I think. It's a mini DV camcorder and then the uh, HFS 100. And now I'm using it with the Sony. Even though the Sony doesn't have a, a mic input, I use it with my Zoom H1 all the time. If I'm doing location shooting or double system sound, I will use an XLR mic going into that box, going into the Zoom H1. Sounds great. Works great. Um, so those are two things that I recommend. I'll leave the links to those below in the description. They're both still available as far. Well, I know the XLR box is still available. I'm not sure about the wide angle lens, but I will leave a link and that will give you, it'll take you to the Amazon page where you can at least get a better look at it. Okay, Richard Dickinson asks, I uh, noticed some tripods use a bowl instead of a quick release connection or flat connection. What are the differences? I'm thinking of making a slider dolly and I would like to know what types of heads or platforms are available. Uh, well, a bowl on a tripod is good for, well there's an advantage and disadvantage using a bowl. What a bowl allows you to do is easily set or easily set your, uh, easily center your tripod head because there's a like a, a bicycle grip or hand grip on the bottom of the bowl. You can loosen it and then adjust your tripod head using the uh, bubble level on the tripod head to see where the middle is. You can easily set it, tighten it down and you're done. That way you don't have to go through your tripod legs adjusting them trying to get balance. The disadvantage of a bowl is that you don't, you will not have the ability to have a crank on your tripod. Like I'm, I have a tripod, doesn't have a bowl adjustment, but it has a crank so I can actually raise the level of the tripod head because there's a neck and a shaft that goes down the middle of the tripod legs that gives you that extra extension. I have a really, really, my tripod can extend like nine or ten feet. It's so huge. It's got legs and within legs and then the, uh, the crank on the side allows you to go even higher. So it all depends on what you want. On a slider, a uh, bowl really isn't going to matter because you'll be mounting the tripod head flat onto the slider anyway. Uh, there's no way you could have a, a bowl adjustment unless you're raised up, like maybe on a hi hat or something. Hi hat meaning short tripod. Uh, and then there'd be a bowl adjustment. But most sliders just have the tripod head right on the slider. There's no room on the bottom, obviously, because it's flat, short. For a bowl adjustment, but bowl, bowl, uh, I'm not sure what you call them, bowl heads, bowl, <laughs> uh, bowl tripod adjustment uh, things are really great. They, like I said, allow you to center really fast. Where on mine, you know, I don't have that adjustment, so I'm having to adjust the legs if that's what I want to do. So there you go. Those are the questions uh, as far as uh, things going on this week. Last, well, last week we had the, uh, the debut of the $10 budget, which was an upgrade from the $1 budget instead of. Uh, picking out items that I could find for around a dollar. I'm actually, the whole show now costs ten dollars and I'm not supposed to go over that budget. Which I did last week, although some people pointed out like, hey, I bought all the items and it wasn't over ten dollars because the prices had lowered since I bought those items and then made it the show. So, um, and this week uh, the question we're having is, uh, what camcorder accessories do you recommend? If you have a camcorder, uh, which many of you still do, um, because, like I said, even if you have a DSLR, the camcorders still have a lot of use. Like I said, if you're using anything you want to shoot that requires you to leave your camera on for a long time, like events. I recently shot a, a ballet, a multi-cam shoot with three of those HFS 100s, or two actually. Um, and then I used a, another one in a different show from a different angle and edited them together. Video looks really good. It still produces good video. It's just more of an electronic-y look, less like a film look. Uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, depends what you're going for. Uh, anyway, if you have one of these cameras, uh, you've been using a camcorder, what accessories do you like uh, that you might want to share with uh, Aspera? <laughs> anyway, and this week we have another show. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a tip episode. I'm not sure what it's going to be about just yet, but I've got some really good things uh, in the pike. Uh, in the pike. Coming down the pike. I get my slang correct. Coming soon. Uh, one of them I'm really excited about is uh, another attempt at the Frugal Floater, the Frugal Floater 2, which is more based on a glide cam type of look and build versus the Steadicam Merlin, which is what I attempted last time. And it had some shortcomings that I wanted to address with a completely different design. 
uh, which again isn't mine. Design means I'm just you know borrowing from what GlideCam has done and, and others, not just them. At any rate, uh, all the Frugal Filmmaker stuff is at the frugalfilmmaker.com. Uh, There's also the Facebook group, which is really big. It's a great place to post your videos, ask your questions, find great deals. Uh, and then I'm at Twitter, at Frugal Filmmaker. So there's always that. And remember, if you want a question to be featured on this show, your best bet of getting it on the show is sending me an email at thefrugalfilmmaker at gmail.com. See you next week.